Hi, everybody. This is Mike Oppenheim, and you are listening to Coffin Talk, Interviews with the Living, a weekly podcast that explores how our views on death affect the way we live our life. We have another guest from across the ocean, uh, way over, not across the pond in Britain, but she is in Australia, and uh, her name is Marianne Coleman. And we've actually met because I was on her podcast, which is called Walking the Shadowlands. And it's an incredible podcast, and we're going to make several references to it. So I would encourage you to check it out. And if at the very least, your interest is somewhat spiked but you don't want to like uh fully go into a podcast i'm going to specifically recommend the first version of the she's revisited the topic many times a glitch in the matrix um i think it's a phenomenal podcast i think that she does an amazing job of setting the listener up no matter what level of familiarity they have with quantum mechanics and the theories of the matrix and our own reality and uh, also you'll get a sense of her sense of humor, which is uh, rare in what I call the spiritual community. So uh, with no further delays, I would love to welcome Marianne to the show. Hi, Marianne. Hi, Mike. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, of course. Um, and among the many things that you've done, I don't want to gloss over. It's just that I'm probably going to ask you more about what you're currently doing. But I should mention everyone that she's also an artist from many mediums. She's worked with clay, silversmithing, She's made artisan jewelry. She paints with pastels, oils, acrylics, and watercolors. She's made sculptures that have sold internationally. She's a published illustrator. She authors children's stories. Um, in addition to that, as if like I, you haven't done enough with your life, she's a retired nurse. She worked in the public and private hospital system in New Zealand. She specialized in cardiothoracic and vascular surgery. Unfortunately, a work accident forced her into early retirement, but then she rebounded from that, went to university, got a second degree and career in computer graphic design, and so she's currently doing all that, plus hosting the phenomenal podcast that I already spoke of. So, Marianne, my first three questions are very simple, and everything after that will probably uh, lead to you giving longer responses and me talking a whole lot less, but I would love for our audience to know, how old are you, where did you grow up, and what generation, if any? do you consider yourself a member of? Oh, my goodness. Um, well, I'm 67. I'm 68 this year. So I guess I would be a boomer. Um, but <laughs> I hate those terms because they're so... Humans have this need to put things in boxes and label them. And not everybody fits every box that we label. So, yeah, I'm... Um, 67 currently i grew up in new zealand and i moved here to australia just uh six months ago to be with uh, my children and my grandchildren who live here that's awesome and only in the interest of time i'm going to forego what would normally be a myriad questions about new zealand culture just because i'm a cultural enthusiast and i love to hear especially the subdivisions of the overarching english-speaking language uh countries but uh one thing that i think you could tell us that would be fascinating for me at least is what is like the chief difference you would tell to an american or a brit or a canadian about australia and new zealand since we tend to stereotype those two even more closely together oh you really do mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> well well um brits not so much mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh i guess you're right yeah i should just say americans yeah Sorry. yeah yeah americans well <laughs> Gosh, I really don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. I mean, I, if, if I was talking with somebody, I'd be able to say, well, mostly it's in the way we use our words and yeah. our accents and our, uh, uh, what are the words, you know, our slang words. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Those are the those are the major differences. That's really interesting to me because I think like some people might think, well, I think now it's almost impossible, but uh, once upon a time, Canada and America might seem blended to people from way over there. But like, you know, to an American and a Canadian, it's very obvious. So that's cool. I like that. How hard or easy was it to adjust to living in Australia after growing up and spending most of your life in New Zealand? Well, it's currently winter here in Australia and I've got a cardigan on today, but it's Pretty much, it's the best winter I've ever had in my life, uh, to be honest. Like, the child, my grandchildren were down at the beach yesterday swimming in the middle of winter. Um, it's beautiful here. I absolutely love it. I love the abundance of wildlife. Culturally, we're pretty similar. There are some differences, but I just love this country. I do. It's beautiful. That's awesome. That's very cool. Um so we're going to shift gears because this is a spiritual podcast as well as a metaphysical podcast. And I do see a difference between the two terms. Um, you are 
clearly as interested in both subjects as I am. And you're also an expert, at least in my words and definitions, you are an expert. Um, you're very humble. And I know that you profess during your podcast that you're not an expert or a scientist, which I think is fair and noble. But at the same time, you are pursuing the scientific <laughs> and metaphysical sciences. So um, what is the first or earliest memory you have of being interested in that subject, since it's not really the most common subject, especially in our Western paradigm? Oh, gosh, this is going to take us probably in a different direction, Mike. Okay. <laughs> um, but my, my first my first memory is three years old. And it's having, oh, actually, no, it's 18 months old. And I'll tell you what happened. Um, um, my parents heard me crying one night. They'd put me to bed. And um, I don't know how late it was. It was dark. And I was, they heard me crying and they couldn't find me in the house anywhere. And so um, I remember, from my point of view, I remember being outside, looking at the stars, it was dark and I was crying because I wanted to go home. But home wasn't where my parents were. And Whoa. my parents were frantic at this stage. They couldn't find me. They couldn't find me anywhere in the house. The house was locked. They eventually found me outside and they had no idea how I got outside. Wow. And that's my first memory. Yeah. I'm a parent of three. Uh, all of them are young. That is terrifying. I mean, yeah. wow. Okay. So that's your earliest memory. And so what was, what is the rationale you currently now at, at your age believe is the explanation for all that? Oh, the explanation is that um, I, I, intermittent and ongoing contact with star people. And uh, that was a memory that was specially generated for me um, so that I would know later on in my life that this was real because my parents mm -hmm. talked about that incident quite often. Wow, that is so fascinating. Um, real quick for our audience, because it's not a common term where I live. Uh, what is star? What are what is star people like? How would you relate that to the average person? Oh, star people are what what most referred to as extraterrestrial beings. And why do you use a different term? Because to me, as a child, they were people from the stars, so they were always star people. I love it. That's really cool. Throughout the history of your life, have you ever wavered in your confidence that you talk to star people, they communicate with you and that they're real? I mean, and I'm asking from a very honest place, it, it is something that the mainstream and status quo where I grew up would, they wouldn't be mean to you about it, but they would certainly tease you at school and, and adults especially would try to talk you out of it, so to speak. Oh, absolutely. No, I never have. Never have. Not once. Uh, and certainly it's been to my detriment growing up, but I always walk my talk and I speak my truth. And that's my reality. That's awesome. And actually, that's a great uh, subtangent of the overall conversation I plan to have with you, which is, is there anyone's reality that isn't valid? Oh, that's a good point. Everybody's reality is valid to them. Mm -hmm. That's a very good point. I just I, I find this the more I interview people who don't uh, corroborate each other's version of how the universe works, the more I believe that that's a very important thing for all of us to consider. Like just because you have comfort in numbers, just because there's an army of Christians and Muslims and uh, Hindus uh, and and Buddhists, doesn't mean that the other fifty million, um, you know, yeah, theories and and feelings aren't valid. A hundred percent. Yeah. So it, it's interesting because I find like. I'll be sensitive to like the ones that touch upon what I believe in or even like are what I believe in. But I, I do internally roll my eyes sometimes when someone says like a very new concept to me that doesn't seem air quotes vetted by, you know, quantum mechanics or, or what I'm familiar with. Does that ever happen to you or, or is it easier for you? Um, I respect everybody's journey. There's many paths up the mountain. There's no one way that's right. And everybody's taking their own journey in this reality and they have to find their own ways. So I respect everybody's journey. I like that a lot. Was there ever a time where that wasn't as easy or has it always? And again, I'm asking all these questions because uh, I am encouraged and motivated by your honesty and by what you're doing in the universe. So I just want to make it clear that all these questions are almost like from a, a younger person in um, confidence, not necessarily age, asking like, how do I get where you are? Well, it, no, it was a process like 
in my younger years, I really struggled, you know, like most people with self-confidence. It, it did, did bother me when people ridiculed me and made fun of me and ostracized me because of my knowing, not my beliefs, because of my knowing. But as I grew older, I learned to really not care about what other people think because I recognize that that's where they are in their journey. Awesome. I love it. Since you communicate w well with star people, do star people kind of view all humans that way, that we're all just kind of like on a journey that they're well past? Or are star people sometimes at our same level or even beneath us? It depends on the species. There's so many different species of star people that I've interacted with. The ones that I see the most find humans very interesting. <laughs> Like they find it endlessly amusing that we have to categorize and label and put things in boxes. That's one thing that they've brought up on several occasions. Um, it's just the way humans work. Do they say it in like a discouraging way? No, 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 not at all. It's just like a, a curiosity to them or well, to the ones that I've spoken with anyway. And so sometimes when you're speaking with them, do you feel like, a younger person on the cusp of the next level talking to an older, wiser person, like in that like good way, like, oh, I'm, I'm learning from this entity. No, they've never, no, I, I, when I was younger, certainly I saw myself many times um, on the craft in uh, the only way I can describe it is in a school, a school learning situation where they were teaching me and other children around my age things that we needed to know for our walk in life. And I certainly believe that what they've taught me has helped me in my work um, as a medium and as a sense, spiritual sensitive. I believe that their teachings have helped me to tap into this this inner ability that everybody has to one degree or another. Yeah, you know, I find this interesting. Every medium I've ever talked to, and I mean every, even ones I don't respect and kind of feel like maybe are embellishing what's going on or even lying, because I, I should preface this with, I wrote a book about psychics and I did research on it. So I went to visit as many psychics as possible in Arizona. Right. Yeah. And so, you know, I'm, I'm just going to throw this out there to people. Yes. Some people are frauds. Absolutely. Like a hundred percent. And that, that shouldn't change your opinion of what is possible. It should only change your opinion of what, who you will believe when you're talking to them. And so my, my point is uh, every medium, even like the ones who I thought were kind of full of it said the same thing. They're like, everyone can do this. So do you have a way of helping people? Like if someone were to uh, become a client of yours or talk to you or ask you for advice? Um, is there like a step-by-step -step process you think that would help them start doing it? Or is it a different reason you can do it? It's, well, no, because it's like athletes, you know, some people can naturally run marathons and some people like me can barely run two feet. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, it's different with everybody, but everybody has it to one degree or another, whether you call it a sixth sense, whether you call it inner knowing, whether you call it gut feelings, everybody has it. The thing is that for most people, it's been socialized out of them. Mm -hmm because they're told to not listen to their feelings, to not listen to their heart. And so they lose that ability to connect with this very integral part of them. And so this kind of begs the question of, and this is why I brought up the uh, Glitch in the Matrix episodes, plural, that you've done. Is there, are we heading somewhere? Is there a purpose to all this? Like, do, do when you talk to star people, do they tell you that, like, now is a very important time in humanity because I hear a lot of people say that, but I don't actually necessarily believe that because it seems like every era feels important to the people in it. Um, so do you have anything to say on that larger concepts subject? Oh, oh my, oh my, <laughs> you're opening a can of worms here. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to go in a way different direction than what you were anticipating. Yes, <laughs> it is a very important time for humanity. Cool. About I was told back in the 80s that a certain amount of humanity had to be awake. By awake, 
I mean questioning the reality around them, questioning what they're being fed, questioning how things are. And about three, three and a half years ago now, we hit that tipping point, and I felt the shift in the physical energies in the world. In fact, I wrote in my Facebook group, I have a Facebook group where I give spiritual help to people for free. I don't charge them. And it's a it's a safe community where people can ask questions um, and, ha- and I answer them for them. And um, I wrote in my group, when I felt the shift, this is what has just happened. I felt the shift. And from here on, you will see this happen and this happen and this happen. And you'll see a polarization of people, of of those uh, people um, awakening and questioning. And that's about the time that the Me Too movement started. That's about the time that a whole pile of stuff started where people were standing up and saying, this is enough. We're not taking any more. I mean, I I, I am, (laughs) yeah, I have goosebumps because it's just, it resonates so clearly to me. I mean, it's crazy that uh, literally COVID like absolutely demarks this for me at least like i mean it is Mm. night and day between the world that believed all you're supposed to do is wake up and work and the world that started questioning Mm. that very foundation you know the premise of accelerated capitalism or capitalism in any form um and actually that i am curious only because you mentioned that it's for free and you don't charge has have any of these uh star people ever like mentioned to you the function of an economy and money because it seems to me like all of spirituality is at as at total odds with the concept of i have more or less than you and we have a way to show that yeah no nah. <laughs> no um money and the way humans work is just totally foreign to any of the star people that i've encountered it's not they don't have the ones that i have encountered don't have systems like that um things are provided for whatever they need and everybody works together for the greater good and at some point wasn't that actually going on here on earth like wasn't there a, a point before bartering and trade and so i i don't know i'm asking this like nakedly and curiously if you've talked to someone and they've told you i haven't asked about that specifically my interactions have been more about them training me and teaching me for the work that i've been doing my lifetime that's awesome. Um, and I think this is the great uh, point in the podcast where I should ask you the only question we plan ahead of time, which is what do you think happens when you die? And I would love to know if this has ever changed in your life or if it's always been consistent. Oh, now this might polarize some of your listeners. <laughs> I love it. Hey, everyone. If you're a fan of the show, please head over to MikeyOp.com and click the subscribe button. It's the best way to support us and it's free. That's M-I-K-E-Y-O-P-P dot com. Thanks. Uh, But I have really vastly different views on, you see, my knowing mostly comes from my star people, not from earth teachings, not from stuff I've picked up here on this planet that passes for, although there are some spiritual truths. um, Okay, here's what I know. I'm I'm going to go I'm going to digress a little bit here, Mike. So you all understand where I'm coming from. That is more than fine. You have the floor. <laughs> Thank you, though. Okay. So for 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 your listeners, think of an onion. I know this is a really think of an onion and think of the earth as the core of the onion. And each onion has multiple layers around the core. And between each layer of the of the between the core and the next layer, there's a, a thin membrane mm-hmm. that separates the layers. And it's the same with every layer on that makes that onion up. Okay. Well, this is what it's like for Earth. The 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 membrane that separates Earth from the next dimension is what we call the veil mm-hmm. or um it's just a barrier. Mm-hmm. It's a barrier between us and the next reality. So Earth is the core of the onion, and there are multiple layers around the outside of the core. Now, when you die, the teachings here, well, think of, think of it in terms of energy, okay? Mm-hmm. Energy never dies. It just changes form. Think of 
water going to rain going to ice it just it never dies it just changes form and this this physical body that we currently inhabit is not who we are it's just the vessel that we use to get around while we're here it's think of it like a car mm -hmm. and when when your car no longer suits your purpose you discard it and move on and you generally don't give it a second thought it's sort of like that when you pass over. When your physical body has come to the end of its useful purpose, you leave the physical body. Now, in earth teachings and all the movies and everything that you see on TV, on the movies and stories, you hear, go to the light, go to the light. Right? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to tell you straight up, the light is a trap. Wow. If you go into the light, into the tunnel, you may see beings who look like loved ones, but actually aren't necessarily loved ones, and they will guide you into the light. And when you go into the light, you go through a process that puts you back in the reincarnation cycle on this reality in this reality <laughs> but you have an option i love this. when you find your when you find yourself out of your body look around you most people just look at the light but look around you and what you'll see is darkness and you may see stars you may see the universe Give yourself time. Don't go straight into the light. You can go into the light if you choose. You have options. You can choose to. You can choose to go into the light and follow this cycle of reincarnation. Or you can take a few minutes and stay in the dark. And then when you realize where you are, and, and it can take a few minutes for people, especially depending on how they pass, then your soul will remember what reality you actually came from, and you can go home. Wow. So, so that's the choice that people have. I've never heard of that, one. And two, that resonates, like, completely and utterly. And it resonates for three reasons. Um, one, it reminds me of, like, in the morning when you know you're waking up but you don't want to, mm. except the opposite is that I don't feel like I have a choice even when I'm lucid dreaming. Like, no matter what... I do feel like the there's no light. It's just I get drawn back. So so it's fascinating to me because when you said the part about the choice, it then reminded me of something else, which is anytime I've taken like psychoactive drugs, um, like LSD or mushrooms or ayahuasca, like anything where like more than marijuana, um, I find that I want to walk into a dark spot and be alone. Like like so when my spirituality right. and consciousness goes up, it doesn't make me want to be alone because I hate humanity or I'm like bitter. It's because I like love that space. And so I actually wake up at three in the morning almost every day of my life because I love the wow. feeling of earth at three in the morning. It's very special to me, like walking outside alone. It's not special at two. There's too many people still up and around four or five more people start getting up. But there's this like three to four is like this beautiful, weird hour where I feel what you were talking about. And that's why I said it resonated. And by the way, I never got to say this because I didn't want to interrupt you, but your onion metaphor was so helpful it, it really made sense to me because that thin membrane i cook every night um, and i cook onions every <laughs> night it's so thin and yet it's so real and it's just such a good metaphor yes and the membrane's not a static thing by the way it's like a curtain that moves and ripples and shifts and it's a constantly moving thing since the 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 number of people have reached that tipping point the 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 veil between the different dimensions and different realities that exist around this reality are thinning, buckling, and in some places tearing. Mm. So more people are having spiritual experiences than ever before. More people are seeing things that don't belong in this reality. And, uh, you know, stuff like that's happening because of that. And oh, it's so fascinating. I have one quick question and then I'm going to leave uh, you with the floor at the end as we always do. Um, and it's a quick question. Your answer doesn't have to be quick. But um, 
have the star people or are you aware intuitively of not the purpose of AI, but like there's a fear of AI. But to me, AI seems like the solution to a lot of what uh, ails us and especially the things we already discussed. For example, it would make the work life balance utterly irrelevant because these things could work for us. And if they don't mind it or have like a real soul. But that's kind of my larger question is, um, have you or do you know anything about artificial intelligence that you care to share with our audience? Well, this reality is artificial intelligence. <laughs> love it so um <laughs> we do live in a simulation i believe <laughs> i mean we feel well it's like anything okay we're all comprised of atoms and atoms are constantly moving that chair that you're sitting on feels solid to you but it's not we feel solid but we're not where there's huge spaces between our atoms. So, you know, this reality is a controlled reality. Make no doubt about it. Our governments, while they are the ostensibly are the ones that set the rules, they're not. They're only mouthpieces. Mm -hmm. And there are those behind the scene who want humanity to stay where they're at, to stay a slave race. Mm. But their time is rapidly coming to an end. And as more and more people wake up and as more and more people realize that we are not a single solitary planet alone, uh, then things are going to change for the better. I love it. That was so powerful. I, I normally would want to just end the podcast on that, but I will give you the following huge compliment. You're like a mic dropper and then some. So, I mean, you're so quotable oh. and you say so many profound and interesting things. And again, just to throw it out there one more time, thank you so much for coming into my life and for being someone that I've been able to talk to twice now at length. Um, so as you probably know from listening to the show, we always give our guests the final floor and then I just give a quick outro. So whatever you would like to say to my audience, please say it now. So the thing that I always say to people, and I've said it from the day I started giving people spiritual advice, and I say it to my group members all the time, you must question everything, everything. Like if if I'm giving you spiritual, like I'm talking to you now, listeners, you question what I'm telling you. See how it resonates with you. How does it sit with you? How does it make you feel? Does it make you feel comfortable? Does it resonate? Does it make you feel like you want to know more? You want to question more? Or does it make you feel uncomfortable, uneasy, like you want to curl up and run away? You don't want to hear it. You need to question and then listen to what your body is telling you because your body will always resonate with what is true that's how those who control this reality have gotten away with it for so long because they put one truth they will use one truth and a thousand lies and because you resonate with that truth you listen to what they say and you accept the rest as being reality as being the truth. So question, 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 and see how it sits with you. That's what I'd like to leave with you all. I love it. Thank you so much, Marianne. This has been such a great interview. Um, I, again, would urge everyone to check out her podcast. Um, it's very easily easy to find. It's called Walking the Shadowlands. Um, I am a guest on it. I will probably be releasing this episode before she's able to release mine. So uh, we'll see how that works. But my point is, I love it. And um, I started listening and there's a lot. I'm going to download the end game after this and listen to that. So um, if you liked her here, you will love her on her own podcast um, and her sense of humor and um, loving nature definitely is palpable on her podcast and, and you will instantly feel at home uh, and you will be able to question her constantly. So you will be able to follow her on advice. Uh, Marianne, thank you again. Uh, um, I, I would like to throw out there for you that I, I listened to the Glitch in the Matrix and please count me as another person who is absolutely positive that Berenstein Bears has been changed. Um, it's the most glaring thing ever in my life to have ever occurred that made me just think there's something really effed up going on in this world. And if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, that's what we call a teaser. So download that episode and figure it out. Um, to everyone listening at home, once again, the best way to support me and this podcast is to head over to MikeyOff.com. That's M-I-K-E-Y-O-P-P.com where you can subscribe 
subscribe for free to the weekly letter that announces the podcast as well as the podcast and everything else that I do at my network. Um, thank you again, Marianne. You've been an amazing guest and thank you to everyone for listening. Once again, my name is Mike Oppenheim. You have been listening to Coffin Talk and we will see you soon.